Hi guys, Amy Bowman here. I hope you guys are staying inside and staying safe, or rather staying home and staying safe. Um, one of the things I've been doing to get outside is taking walks through my neighborhood and looking at all the pretty wildflowers. Here are a few that I have seen today on my first walk. So I've got some of these. I'm not really sure what they are, but they're kind of pretty. Um, here are some azaleas. These are great right now, blooming everywhere. So here's just a few of the things that I have found on my walk this morning. Um, got me thinking, what are flowers? Why are flowers important? Why do they bloom every spring? Why do you see them around? So I'm gonna pause for just a minute, give you a chance to think about why are flowers important to the plant? So take just a minute, think about that, and write down your answer. All right, so some of the answers I've heard from that question in the past when I've been out at schools is because they're pretty and they smell good and they attract bees, which are all great answers, but it doesn't really answer the question, why are flowers important to the plant? I know why they're important to me, because I like them. They're pretty, they smell good, and they just make me feel good. Um, but plants, why are they important? So flowers are the reproductive part of the plant. The plant's main goal is to reproduce and produce more plants. So the flower is where all of that takes place. Now we're gonna look at a couple of different flowers today and we're gonna see how that happens. Um, how many of you know that plants reproduce sexually? That means they have male parts and female parts and they reproduce sexually just like a lot of other things do. So we're gonna look at some flowers today. I've got a lily here and an astromeria. We're gonna dissect these flowers and look at all the different parts and see exactly how plants reproduce. So let's get started. We're gonna start with this lily here. I'm gonna get it really close to the camera so you can see. The lily has, and most of our flowers have four different layers. They have four different layers and they are kind of in a circle or what's called a whorl. And each layer plays a very specific function in reproduction. So we're gonna start from the outside and go inside on this. So starting from the outside, our first layer, if you think about it, it looks like all petals, doesn't it? But this first layer, if you look at this, the ones on the outermost, we're gonna take those off. These are called sepals. Now in the lily, they look just like the petals. They're the same color, um, same size a little bit, but the but they are usually a little more elongated, a little bit longer, a little bit more narrow. And their job is to protect the flower as it develops, as it's developing inside. So here I have a bud. This one has not opened yet. And all these outside parts, these are the sepals. They hold it in there tight while all the parts inside that plant flower are developing. Until it's ready for reproduction, it stays nice and tight and protected. Okay, so these are our sepals, that's S-E-P-A-L, sepals, and their job is to protect, okay? Um, our second layer, if you're looking outside in, what do you think that is? Yep, it's the petals. So here we have our petals. What do you think their job is? I'm gonna pause for just a minute and let you answer that question. So what did you say was the reason the job of the petals or the function. Uh, it's the same reason we like flowers is because they're pretty. So the job, the function of the petals is to be pretty and to attract and not try to attract people as much as attract pollinators. So we're talking different types of bees and butterflies, moths, some birds, some bats, mammals, um, all fu function as pollinators. And we'll get back to that a little bit later. But the petal's job is to attract. This one is nice and bright and white and can easily be seen. Now here we have a different one. I've already removed the sepals, but this is an astromeria, still in the lily family. But if you look closely, you'll see lots of little dashes on there. You also see a color change. It starts off being kind of orange up here and the color changes as we go down. Well, these little dashes or spots on there are called honey spots. They have nothing whatsoever to do with honey, but what they do is they direct the pollinator. They tell the pollinator, this is where you need to go, right in here. So think about those guys at the airport with the lights directing the airplanes. That's what these spots do. Think about seeing this as you're flying over. It directs the pollinator exactly where that flower wants it to go. Here we have a little bit different one. 
So we have, this is one that I picked up on my walk this morning. And as you see, it gets really bright and light colored toward the center. And that's where the flower wants the pollinator to go. So it's kind of like a flashing light saying, stop here, stop here. Here I have the azaleas and it has honey spots on it as well. All those little spots on there are telling the pollinator exactly where to go. So that is the function of the petals. So I'm gonna remove the petals from our lily right here and we'll see what we have next. Okay, so now I have a whole bunch of little sticky things, okay? Um, some of them look a little bit different. There's one in the center and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So these are, let me go ahead and take one of, the, one of these off. What do you think this is and what do you think it does? Okay, got a piece of paper and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap this on there and show you what happened. What do you think all of that is? That is pollen, okay? So that is pollen. And pollen, each grain of pollen, contains sperm cells. And remember we talked about that plants reproduce sexually, so you're gonna to have to have the male sexual cell and the female sexual cell, male cell being the sperm, the female cell being, hmm, what's that? We'll talk about that in a minute. So what we have here, this is the male reproductive part. This is called the stamen, and the stamen has two parts. It has this right here, the filament, and the part right here that's jiggling and moving around a lot, this is the anther. The anther is where the pollen is produced. All right, so this one has six different anthers. It produces quite a bit of pollen. It's probably what's all over my car right now. So we have six different anthers. That's where the pollen is produced. But then we have this other part right here in the center. So what do you think that is? Well, we've already talked about protection. We've already talked about attraction. We've got the male part, so this must be the female part. I'm gonna move it in a little closer so you can see better. Try to get some contrast here where you can see what, I'm, what we're looking at. This is the female reproductive part, and it is called the pistil. So the pistil is composed of actually three different parts. We have this part right here, which is called the style. It's basically the same as the filament, it just holds it up. And then at the very end, what we have is called the stigma. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit and let you see it a little bit better. Um, and that's the little thing. If I can get the right light on there, you can kind of see that that end is a little bit sticky, a little bit kind of wet and shiny and sticky looking. I wonder why that is. Um, and then we have this swollen part right here. So this is the female reproductive part. What do we have to have for reproduction? We have to have a sperm cell. We know where those are. Those are in, in the the stamen, and then the egg cells, which is the female reproductive part, are at the very base of this pistil, okay? This pistil, its function right here is to attract pollen. All this pollen will stick to it. So when the pollinator comes and it lands on the flower, it gets pollen all over its body and it crawls all around over there and all of that pollen, some of the pollen will stick to the, stick to the pistil, to the stigma, the sticky part of that, and actually help pollinate the flower. Once it sticks on there, all each of those little pollen grains sends what they call a pollen tube down through this style into the ovary. And the ovary, that's where the egg cells are. They're contained in things called ovules. And if you cut this open, you'd be able to see. I'm, I cut one open, but I don't really think that you can see very well anything on the inside. But inside, trust me, inside here, there are hundreds and hundreds of little ovules and each contain an egg cell, all right? So once the flower is pollinated, meaning that pollen has been transferred from another flower to this flower, um, and each of those pollen grains produces a pollen tube, that pollen tube goes down through this, the stigma and the style into the ovary, that swollen part right here, and connects with the ovules. Those ovules contain the egg cells, the sperm is transferred from the pollen down the tube into the egg cell and you have fertilization. Once you have fertilization, it can now develop into seeds. Now they're fertilized and they will produce seeds, voila, now we have reproduction. Um, 
something, some of the, this ovary right here on this flower is just gonna produce seeds. But in some things, that's actually going to become a piece of fruit. So like an apple or an orange, a pear, that becomes, the ovary becomes the fruit surrounding those seeds. I just went to my fridge to get a little cherry tomato right here. And so let's look at this. I'm gonna cut this open for you. And we're gonna look, because this tomato is a great example of an ovary. And when I cut it open, inside you can see all the seeds. So this is surrounding the seeds. This has obviously been pollinated and fertilized. So that's what we have as far as flowers. And this is, um, so you might wanna go out in your backyard, see if you can find something maybe like this, or if you have any lilies around, see if you can find all of those parts. Let's take a quick, quick review. All right, the first layer or whorl is called the sepals and that holds it all together as it's developing and its job is protection. The second layer is the petals. The petals job is to attract. The third layer, that's the male reproductive layer and that's called the stamen. The stamen is where the, the pollen is produced and the sperm cells are and our Fourth and final part is the pistil. The pistil is where the pollen sticks to. This is the female reproductive part and also contains the ovary. Once fertilized, develops into seeds, just like we have in our tomato plant right here. Thanks for tuning in.